What is a complete human? Is it a cover model? Is it a science geek? Is it a fitness expert? Or all of the above and more? Jana and Evan are crusaders that walk the earth looking at today's issues that touch our hearts and minds. The honest and hopeful outlook on the advancement of today's society. The science behind the decay of human relationships. The necessary preparations for future generations. Join us as we look deep inside ourselves and embark on a journey into becoming a complete human. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Complete Human Podcast with your hosts, Jana Breslin and Evan DeMarco. Today, we are doing rapid fire Q&A on one of the most important topics that I've been fortunate enough to discuss over the last five to 10 years of my career, which is omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. Yeah, this is your topic. This is my topic. And you know what? It's funny. My views on this topic have actually changed a little bit in the last couple of years. It's actually changed a lot in the last couple of months. So I'm excited to share some of the information that I've uh, kind of uncovered as more and more research has become available. But what we're going to do is is have some rapid fire information on this one. You're going to ask some questions. I'm going to do a little brief history on omega-6, omega-3 ratios. It's something we hear about, but it's not often uh, that we talk about it in the context of what does that mean, what it means. So what I'd like to do is hop on our time machine, go back 10,000 years, and let's look at our caveman ancestors. Um you know, loincloths are in fashion, you know, <laughs> body odor is probably a little rough. That's my kind of fashion. Not the body odor, but the other The loincloths? Yeah, the yeah. loincloth. Loincloths are definitely high fashion. Body odor is a little rough. Uh, oral health, not good. But here's something interesting. In spite of all of that, they're healthier than us, a lot healthier than us. And one of the key drivers in that health is lack of inflammation. Lack of inflammation specifically brought on by high omega-6 levels in the blood. So if we go forward in time, if we hop back in our time machine and we kind of go through, uh, you know, go forward in time, what we're going to find is things pretty much stayed consistent with our ancient ancestors, which was a one to one ratio of omega six to omega three. And it wasn't until about the 1950s that things got a little wonky. And the reason for that, quite frankly, is just grains. What we started to do was feed all of our cattle and our livestock grains. They went from grass, where they just wandered the plains, they ate grass, they were finished with grass, to eating high-grain diets, corn, soybeans, all of these things that have massive amounts of omega-6. Well, so all, now all of a sudden, the livestock that we're eating has a much higher omega-6 uh, ratio than before. But then something else happened. McDonald's comes along. Fries, right? So we take this perfectly good potato, pull it out of the ground, we chop it into these make weird... Make it better. We, yeah, we <laughs> make it better, we chop it into these weird shapes, and then we deep fry it in vegetable oil. So not only did we have our um, you know, our livestock, which now had a much higher omega-6 ratio, but all of our vegetables, by virtue of these oils that we were now cooking in, now brought this ratio up. So what we went for, what, what we had when we were our ancient ancestors of this one-to-one -one really healthy ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 now in the United States is an average of 20 to 25 to 1. That much omega-6 in our diet is so pro-inflammatory. And so now the CDC, as of today, just said that negative COVID outcomes are directly tied to obesity and being overweight. And they recommend it in all of this for people to lose weight. But one of the things that they have not addressed is the level of omega-6 that we get through traditional Western diet. So we have to fix that. Now, one of the things that I've been a big proponent of is really fixing that by increasing our omega-3. But what I found is, well, what happens if we just decrease our omega-6? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's some of the interesting things that we're going to talk about here. So I know you had some questions you wanted to, to kind of ask as we get into the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio um, that are not directly tied to loincloths. <laughs> yes, a little bit different. So our first question is, why do we need to have a proper ratio between the two? Yeah, and that really just comes down to inflammation, right? We've talked a lot about inflammation. Acute inflammation is good. I get a cut. That's my body signal to send all of the, you know, the, the fun stuff to that cut to start the healing process. Well, acute inflammation is a trigger, you know, based off of an insult, based off an injury. Chronic inflammation is something that leads to disease. So acute becomes chronic, if not resolved, chronic leads to disease. A level of 
you know, a, a, an omega-6 to an omega-3 ratio of 20 to 1 is so pro-inflammatory that we are, people who have that are chronically inflamed. So their probability of getting Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease just goes through the roof. If we don't bring that omega-6 to a re- omega-3 ratio back in line to where it should be, we are just headed right off of the cliff into straight into disease world. Right. You make a good point about, you know, maybe you don't need to add in omega-3s, maybe just decrease the inflammatory omegas. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was something that I, that's a relatively new development in, in, I think, my belief system. Because I was, you know, coming from the fish oil side of the world, it was always, well, let's just, the, the omega-3s were really the band-aid. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's not fix the diet. Let's just load you up with fish oil. Eat your fries and take your fish oil. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But, and and there's absolutely a place for polyunsaturated fatty acids in in good quality omega-3. I believe that. I believe in the 22,000 clinical trials that have supported the need for those. But I also believe now, after understanding the value of regenerative agriculture, the value of grass-fed, grass-finished beef or livestock and what that means for our health, that by eating properly and reducing that intake of omega-6, that we can really have that, what I would call, evolutionary omega-6 to omega-3 uh, mm-hmm. balance. Well, I think also when people think omega-3s, in increasing that, they think salmon, fish. Yeah. Right? You've been talking a lot about livestock, so that's a very different mindset. It is, and, and here's the thing that I found out, right, is Good quality beef, grass-fed, grass-finished, raised on regenerative, you know, uh, uh, land, actually has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio better than salmon. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Now, another thing that I recently talked about, I, I read a research study on, was um, there was, a, there was a, a fascinating research study on grass-fed versus grain-fed versus placebo, a pound of beef a day for 10 weeks. Now think about that. You have to eat a pound of beef a day for 10 weeks. The group that was grass-fed and grass-finished, all of their inflammatory markers went down. The group that was grain-fed, all of their inflammatory markers went up. Mm-hmm. And then the placebo was the placebo, right? There was, there was very little change. But what we found is, is that grass-fed, grass-finished beef actually will reduce the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Wow. So what is the proper ratio and what ratio are most people getting? You mentioned it's pretty high, but what does it need to be? You know, uh, all of the research really shows between one to one and one to four. And and that really is kind of the sweet spot that we should be aiming for. Now, recognizing that there are a lot of omega-6s that we can get from healthy sources, walnuts, you know, uh, certain, uh, certain pro, you know, like peanut butter, right? Like we eat peanut butter by the bucket over here. Um, You know, even certain meats and things are going to have a higher concentration of omega-6. So a a 1 to 4 is really not going to be that, you know, out of whack. It's it's when we get, or I'm sorry, 4 to 1 is not going to be that out of whack. It's when we get to 20 to 1, 25 to 1 that things just get really bad. And what we found is people who have that really high ratio are the ones that traditionally have that Western diet. They're eating more fast food than they should. They're eating more processed food than we should. So when we cut out all of those processed foods, when we cut out all of those corn oils, those vegetable oils, those soybeans, we can see almost an immediate drop in that ratio. And we talk a lot about diagnostic testing here on the show. The omega quant test, the omega index test that you can either get online or through your practitioner, through your doctor, will give you what your ratio is. And that's one of those data points that every single person really needs to know as they embark on a health and wellness journey. Yeah, I was going to ask, how soon can someone see results if they were to change their diet, try and get those ratios down? Pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, now, interestingly enough, and, and again, this is where I've had to kind of re reevaluate my belief system on this or my opinions on this one, is we always used to look at the omega-6 to 3 ratio in terms of how much fish oil did you have to take to fix that ratio versus what dietary modifications do you need to make to fix that ratio? Now, if we start to pair those two together, if you're eating good quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef, if you're eating healthy vegetables, if you're eating the way that you should be eating, which actually is not necessarily organic, but regenerative, and you pair that with the necessary interventions like good quality fish oil, well, how quickly can you see that? I mean, 60 to 90 days, and you would see a significant difference in those markers, which is going to really be a good indication of 
is what you're doing working for your body or is it not? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we have a product PRM response. We've mm-hmm. both been taking it, you know, for months now. Um, we've seen really great markers in our health. Um, we're generally pretty healthy individuals. Is that still beneficial for us to take? Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you asked that, right? Because, because, you know, I also believe that everybody should take something for a reason. Now, the way that we live today is a lot different than our caveman, you know, ancestor 10,000 years ago. We have to deal with more insult and onslaught today in the form of environmental toxins, in the form of stress, in the form of how we live our lives. So the way that we have to modulate inflammation is a little bit different. So even though our six to three ratios need to get better, they can all get better still supporting your body's ability to actively resolve inflammation um, is one of the key components to longevity. And what we found with PRM is, is that these resolvents, protectants, marissins, these, these downstream metabolites of polyunsaturated fatty acids really help in the resolution phase of inflammation. So if you've got a good omega-6 to omega-3 ratio and you know, you're resolving inflammation, well, you still need to clear that, in, you know, that cellular debris. And that's where the PRMs really come in. So um, there's always room for improvement. That's a great product. But getting our six to three in line, that's step one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so I think, you know, infl- you mentioned inflammation. This is op- obviously a hot topic when we have stress, when we have environmental factors, daily life, that's, that contributes to inflammation on top of these inaccurate ratios of omega threes and sixes and nines and everything. So what are the negative effects of chronic inflammation? If that is not resolved, you mentioned a couple issues with health, but... The most common, especially in the United States, is cardiovascular disease. And, and when we really look at the mortality rate, uh, the number of annual deaths, I, I'm never going to minimize what COVID has meant you know, and what it has done, but that pales in comparison to cardiovascular disease or diabetes or cancer. So if left unresolved, if left unchecked, chronic inflammation is a surefire way to, to early mortality, to early death. And, and it's not a fun way, right? It's not a, <clears throat> not that death is ever fun. And, and I certainly don't want to trivialize that. But, you know, when we think about aging gracefully, there's a big difference between aging well and Aging in a capacity where we're so chronically inflamed that we can't enjoy our time here, that we're in pain. We can't walk with our kids. We can't play with our grandkids. We can't do the things that we want to do. That road towards chronic inflammation is a pathway towards a lifestyle that is just simply not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So as a wrap up to this, what are your top suggestions and tips for people to get their omega ratios in order? Well, for great question, right? And, and I've covered a little bit in this, this interview so far, but number one is know where you begin. You know, know where you're starting. Get the test. Get the Omega, you know, test. Talk to your doctor. Go online to omegaquant.com. They're not a sponsor of us. We have no affiliation with them, but I've used them a lot in the past. That test is great. It's just a dried blood sample. Send it in. They'll send you your results. Know where you're beginning. And then from that, map out, a, you know, let, let's create a path. The first thing you have to do is fix the diet. Get rid of the cooking oils. Get rid of all of the corn oil. Get rid of all the processed food, the potato chips, all of that stuff. It's just not healthy. Get a back to basics diet. Think like that caveman that had that, you know, one to one ratio. And if that means putting on a freaking loincloth to do, you know, to cook, do it. <laughs> it works. I'm telling you. Um, so was the apron the modern day loincloth? I think so. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes. Uh, I like it's it. Like, it, you know, you, you see, and that's the thing. If you're not cooking with all of those oils, you don't have to worry about grease splatters on your chest, no, right? you're safe. You're safe. Regenerative agriculture has to be the f- at the forefront of this. And we're going to talk a lot about what that really means, but look for Regen Earth verified on your products. Grass-fed, grass-finished. Organic is great, but organic does not necessarily mean regenerative. Mm -hmm. And in that, there's some elements like organic beef can still really be organic corn-fed beef. That's not healthy. So regenerative, grass-fed, grass-finished livestock, healthy fruits and vegetables. Um, But just minimize the sugar, minimize the processed foods. If it comes in plastic, like if you have to open a box and then open up a plastic, like think of a Twinkie. That's not healthy. So... We instinctually know what's good, but if we actually start focusing on the things that, you know, that we know are healthy, but then optimize those even further, 
Eggs are a perfect example. You know, add more eggs, get more protein, get more carbohydrates from natural sources. Um, that's usually step two. Know your, you know, know where you're starting, optimize the diet, then supplement after that. Add a good polyunsaturated fatty acid like Complete Humans PRM Resolve. Um, or response, sorry. Uh, you know, and then from there, you know, once you've done that for three to four months and you can retest, well, now you're going to know. Are you on a pathway towards success or do you need to optimize even more? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always highlight testing before anything. You need to know where you're starting from to know where you need to go. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just walking around in a circle. And who wants to do that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it happens, you know, I think each person has one leg that's just a little bit longer. So they said, like, if you're stuck in a desert and you don't have any way to orient yourself and you start walking, you'll eventually just walk in a giant circle. <laughs> I believe that my right leg is actually a lot longer than my left leg. So my circle is, you know, it's a little tighter. One of my favorite things about you is these little just tidbits of information that's so random, but so appreciated. (coughs) I just, I love it. These are my favorite things. Ah, good. These are a few of my favorite (laughs) things. Anything else that we can share on Omega-6 to Omega-3? No, that's all I got. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Rapid Fire on Omega-6 to Omega-3. We hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, Please let us know if there's any additional information you want to know, especially on the topics of health, wellness, sex, life, love. What else we got? (laughs) Any and all of it. And loincloths. And loincloths. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another edition of the Complete Human Podcast with your hosts, Jenna Breslin and Evan DeMarco. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.